what does heaven look like? Is the afterlife real? These are really pressing questions for a lot of people. And if you'd like to hear what I can share with you from what I have learned from my own departed loved ones and hundreds and thousands of clients that I've worked with over many, many years, then please stay tuned. I'm gonna share four things that are really, really important for you to know about heaven and the afterlife. I'm Diana Palm from dianapalm.com. I'm a medium author and spiritual healer, and I work with people every single day who have lost close loved ones. And when I'm connecting with them in spirit, I've had the beautiful, beautiful experience of seeing what their heaven looks like. For many, many years, I have been involved with the afterlife and with collecting proof of the afterlife because as a medium, I'm actually able to connect with loved ones in the spirit world and see the things that they show me. This alone has given me a substantial amount of work to base all my theories on and my belief system about heaven and the afterlife. However, it's also been my work with collecting proof of the afterlife through real EVP voices of the spirit world, dream visits, and mentally connecting with loved ones who have passed that have helped me to further substantiate my belief in what I'm about to tell you. Number one, there really is what most people refer to as heaven. And this is a beautiful light that is open to you when you pass. There is a certain time frame that this window of opportunity exists for you to freely go into the light or into heaven. And if people choose not to go, that's through their own free will, not a judgment and not a punishment. If they choose not to go, that's when they can become earthbound and become what we mostly refer to as ghosts. But hopefully all your loved ones will go directly into the light and experience what we call heaven. When this beautiful light opens for you, you will be greeted by all of your loved ones, your ancestors, even people that you never even met in this life. You will also be greeted by any pets that you had. You'll be greeted by your angels and some spirit guides and any of your close family or friends. It's quite a welcoming home and you will be greeted with tremendous love and support. Usually there's one or two people that step forward to usher you and help you enter the light. And once you're there, that's when you're reunited with all of your loved ones. You'll see them as, they're, as if there are just crowds of people full of love for you. The second thing that you should know is that when you do go into this light and you enter heaven, you release all your worldly concerns. So if there were any issues in your life that you still needed to forgive, you're still carrying resentments, most of those are just dropped right at the door when you enter the higher vibration of this amazing light that awaits you. And immediately when they step into the light, their physical body is restored to perfect health. There's absolutely no suffering, no anger, no remorse on the other side. It's really quite an amazing process because there are levels to the light once you get on the other side. And when a spirit goes there, depending on their level of being healed physically, emotionally, and spiritually, they will be able to continue to grow and continue to heal until their soul is purified and they understand and grasp all the lessons that they experienced in life until they've actually reached the peak level of complete absolute forgiveness and the ability to see every event in their life as a blessing rather than some kind of struggle or hardship that they lived through. That's why these souls that do go to heaven and do continue their healing on the other side are absolutely peaceful and full of love and understanding for everyone in their life and everything that they have lived through. People ask me all the time what their loved ones are doing on the other side. So that brings us to number three. We do actually have jobs once we die. So once we enter the spirit world and we enter heaven, as we're moving up these different levels and layers of heaven, we're still becoming purified. We're still understanding our lessons. We're understanding the purpose of all the things that we lived through. We're receiving the gifts and the blessings of all the things that we encountered with people. Sometimes they were teaching us and sometimes we were teaching them. 
But as we escalate through these different layers on the other side, we have opportunities to step forward for our living loved ones and actually serve them in different ways that we weren't able to when we were still living in a physical body. So many times your very own ancestors and very, very close loved ones will assign themselves to you to be your spirit guide and they will help you with anything that you need help with as you continue your lifetime on earth. There are some people who love animals so much that when they get to the other side, they choose to be caretakers to all the animals that passed. There are other jobs too. Sometimes people just hold this wonderful high vibration of love and send that energy to earth to transmute and heal the earth. Our loved ones in heaven are always trying to impress this higher knowledge, this higher level of understanding and spiritual connection from what they've gleaned and learned from being on the other side. They're trying to impress that and teach it to you, all of their loved ones, their communities, and basically the world. So they're not just zapped into nothingness, there really is a lot of importance to what they do in the spirit world in between lifetimes. The most wonderful thing is there's no competition, there's no fear, there's no doubt. All of those lower human emotions are literally elevated when they cross over into the light. So once they're there, it's all cooperation, love, support, joy. And this is the type of energy that they bestow upon you when they come to visit you in a spirit visit. And the fourth thing that you really need to know, what does heaven look like? Well, this may surprise you, but there is not one way that heaven looks. In fact, we co-create our heaven for ourselves. We do. We create our heaven. If you want to know what your own heaven looks like, I want you to close your eyes and picture all the things in your current life that make you the most happy now in your physical body. So if that's being around family and friends, if you like going to the lake house, if you enjoy boating, if you love making gourmet food, if you just like being outside in nature, then this is actually what is being created for you on the other side. Your heaven is always your best version of this life right now. So as you're living it and as you're experiencing these things, little pieces of that are being moved into your own creation of heaven and they await you when you pass. I have seen countless different heavens. And what I mean by that is sometimes when I'm crossing over a ghost or a loved one who has not gone to the light, immediately when they enter the light they begin to show me they begin to show me their surroundings and they are all unique i have one friend in particular who's always on the saint croix river boating and he's always got his favorite drink in his hand one of his favorite things is that he can eat all the food that he loved to when he was living but he never gains weight so that's one of the ways that he is enjoying his heaven my little sister has shown me her heaven in a dream visit where she actually led me to this place. It was just the perfect habitat, perfect weather, perfect balance in nature with water and sun and growth, trees and grass. And there were the most unusual animals that I had ever seen. And this was her bliss, this was her heaven. She happened to be an extreme animal lover. So this is the heaven that she created. And mostly what I see is this beautiful look upon everyone's face where their eyes are just full of light, their smiles are huge, their hearts are full of love, and they're emanating this beauty, the serenity, and a peacefulness that is only truly even found in heaven. Many people don't realize that on the other side, we can still enjoy food and drink. So that's often one of the things that I see our loved ones doing in heaven is having these wonderful meals and drinking their favorite beverage. Maybe it's wine, maybe it's beer, uh, but they don't have a problem with it. So in other words, they're not alcoholics. They don't have any kind of eating disorders. There's no extremes in heaven. It's just a vibration where they still experience the joy and pleasure of eating, taste, and flavor. Oftentimes when I help people cross over, the first thing that they show me is another loved one in heaven, and they'll show me things that they enjoyed doing together. Recently, I was working with somebody, and when I crossed them over, 
he showed me a relative of his that had passed previous to him that was waiting for him at the golf course. I could see the shirts they were wearing, their golf cart, the clubs, and his loved one that was waiting for him was ready to play this amazing game of golf on a pristine course with no other people around. I've encountered many people in heaven holding the babies of their descendants. I've seen people making fabulous meals for family and friends that are coming to heaven soon. Many of our loved ones are still doing some of the things that they love to and enjoyed most in life without the added drawback that they don't get tired, they don't have time restraints, they don't have to do it for a living, and they don't get sore bodies. They just do it for the pure love and joy of whatever it was that they enjoyed most. Some of these visions actually come to me as I'm working with clients and I'm tuned in to their loved ones, either crossing them over or connecting with them for messages. And at that time I can look around and see what kind of things they're showing me to describe their heaven. The other way that I've accessed this information is through dream visits where my own loved ones have taken me there and shown me their heaven. My hunch is some of you may have experienced one or another versions of this yourself. If you've lost a loved one and you feel like you've gleaned a bit of their heaven, either through a dream or a spirit visit, I would love to hear about it down below. And if you know what you're creating in heaven already, based on what you really, really love the most in this lifetime, I'd also really love to hear that. If you like this video, please give me a like down below and make sure to subscribe so you get my video every Thursday when I upload a new video. One of the things that I find the most gratifying in doing this work is that it really eases any fear that people have about the death process. In my work, I can tell you unequivocally that there is an afterlife and there is a beautiful space to move into that we continue to experience life even with our living loved ones. I hope this video helped bring you some peace and a better understanding of the afterlife. Thanks for watching everyone. Have a great day.